Uh, we are back again guys and today is uh, one of the fantastic days for us actually and we cannot put price on this day because we are meeting the ambassador person the guy who <laughs> has been impressing the Chadian society since he been on the office and what he's doing like it's a very fantastic job and I'm not going to talk behind of him he will be presenting himself and we'll be asking him question about her and I about the art and how much he wants to help the Chadian society and the also the people that want to present something but they are lacking materials and they are unseen so, so well, thank you how are you <laughs> well, great thank you look about a month ago i met some young chadian artists here in the embassy uh, a couple kids showed some paintings that i, I, I liked and I, I said okay well, who taught you how to do this and where did you learn uh, to paint uh, was there an Ecole de beaux art is there a, in high school do you have an art program and they, they looked at me like i was crazy right. and said no we you know, we sont you know we taught ourselves and that was the that was the beginning of this idea which is to invite a bunch of young guinean artists who are all self-taught mm. and have them show off their talent here at the embassy where we have a nice space and we can bring people together and celebrate uh, ch young Chadians teaching themselves how to make beautiful things. And so that has sort of become the theme of my first month here in Chad. And, and so what I've started to do is I start to walk around and I stop young Chadians and I say, excuse me, how do you make a living? Right. What do you do? Because I have a job in an office, I get a salary. There's nothing remarkable about that. Work pay, I've never worried about, will I get it paid this week? Will I get paid this month? Will I have enough food? Will I have enough, uh, will I have house? Uh, but these kids, and all, all Chadians, but I'm looking at young people, uh, every morning wake up with this, with the, with the question, the challenge, how am I going to live today? So I stop kids on the street. I say, you know, I'm a you know, big American who speaks bad French and bad Arabic. <laughs> and I say, okay, who are you? And explain to me how you make a living. So this past Sunday, I saw some kids who, collect firewood from palm trees and bring it to the market. And they said, well, propane gas is very expensive right now and it's scarce, so people need to need firewood uh, for the kitchen right. to prepare food. And he said, okay, so I live about 10 kilometers from N'Djamena and in my, in my area there are palm trees. So every afternoon I cut the, the bark from the palm trees, mm. I dry it overnight, and in the morning I gather it and I pay a, a moto taxi to bring me into N'Djamena. I sell my, my firewood and I go home. I said, how do you get home? I walk. Why do you walk? Well, because I save money. So this poor kid, rather than spend, you know, a thousand francs CIFA on a moto taxi, walks eight or nine, eight or 10 kilometers. So I have to respect that. I have to respect the fact that this kid needs the money uh, so badly that he's willing to do this. Uh, he does this every day uh, in the hopes that at the end of the day, he'll have enough money to meet his basic needs. So I met another kid who collects plastic bottles. So every day he walks around the city, he collects empty plastic bottles, he walks down to the Shari River and he washes them. Then he puts them back in a sack and he walks them to a recycling center where he sells a bag for 1,500 francs CIFA. And he said, on, on some days I do two bags, if I get lucky, I do three bags. And I asked him, why? Why, why are you doing this? Are you doing this because because your family needs money, because you need school fees, you need to pay your um, bills. He said, no, I want a telephone. And what that tells me is this young kid wants to connect. He, he, he knows that there is something out there, something better out there. He wants to be part of it. And he's willing to work 10, 12 hours a day in the hot sun collecting trash for recycling so he can be connected to something bigger uh, in the world. And I met another kid who has one of the uh, the pus pus, you know, the carts. And every morning he walks through his neighborhood and he tells uh, menager, he tells the housewives, give me your rugs. I will walk them down to the Shari River. I will clean them with sand and with water, and I'll bring them back to you. And if you give me 1,500 francs CIFA, I said, how many rugs can you do in a day? He said, eight or 10. So every morning, seven o'clock, he walks through his Cartier, he collects the rugs, he pushes them down to the Shari River, takes sand and water and cleans them, walks them back to the to the menager and, get, and gets paid. And I said, why do you do this? He said, well, we need the money. I have brothers and sisters. I'm the oldest brother. It's my responsibility to help put food on the table. So I'm thinking to myself, 85% of Chadians live like that. When whether it's you know fishermen, farmers, herders, commerçants, um, they work from sunrise to sundown seven days a week to get ahead. And so at the same time, you know I'm sitting in the national dialogue, watching people talk about the future of Chad, and watching good people, people of goodwill from from around the political spectrum, talking about their vision of the future. What strikes me, however, is these are two separate realities. The people who the people like me yeah. who show up in a Toyota Land Cruiser, and the people like them who would rather walk 10 kilometers than spend a thousand francs. Uh, Frank Sifa uh, on a moto. And I think our challenge is to close the distance between the Land Cruiser and the people. Yeah. Thank you very much.
very much. And Abaka may has a question. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions, Your Excellency. Um, the first question is, this is really the, the Chadians' poor reality is, and this is their dirty life since a while. Uh, what is the message of hope that you have for these young Chadians that they're doing their best to just have their living stuff? Well, first of all, the reason I, I think I'm going to love Chad, and I've started to love Chad, is... So these people who are working crazy hours for what I would consider to be almost nothing, I stop them on the street, I say bonjour or salam alaikum, and we can barely communicate in any one of three or four languages, but every single one of them, when I smile at them and I ask them about their lives, every single one of them stops what they're doing and talks and tells me exactly what is they're doing. And they're so friendly and they are, they are eager to engage, they're eager to talk to me. Um, they're a little surprised that an American ambassador is walking down the street uh, talking to them. Actually, I was surprised, sorry for cutting you out. I was surprising that. You know, but, but, but the minute they get over the surprise, it turns to absolute delight that, look, to them I represent power. I represent a powerful country. I'm a powerful person. A higher position. And a higher position. Right. And they're so, they're so eager to tell me their stories because they're talking to power. And, you know, my heart goes out to them because, all's the, look, all they want is the chance for their labor to be rewarded uh, appropriately. Uh, I think young Chadians sell their labor too cheaply. Now, okay, that's the economic reality. So what I did tonight was uh, I brought a bunch of young chatty artists. I got a bunch of rich people together and said, okay, hey, chatty artists, you need to increase the, you need to raise your prices. Exactly. Okay, I got rich people here. You need to start selling your labor for what I think it's worth, not necessarily for what the, you know, the, the market thinks it's worth. And I told all my rich friends, hey, shut up and buy this art. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is income redistribution. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, these kids are incredibly talented. Right. Yes, sure. uh, and what, again, what strikes me is, you know, in America, if you have a talented kid, in Europe, if you have a kid who shows talent at the age of six or seven or eight or nine, he or she goes into a special program. So their, their high school, their lycée, will have a fine arts program. And maybe they'll go to a special school for fine arts. Maybe they'll go to university to study fine arts. And so all along the way, people recognize their gifts and nurture them and grow them. Uh, here, you don't have that luxury. So these kids self-identify their gifts and pursue them with no, with, no, uh, with no expectation that this will sustain them. They're just doing it because they're good at it, they want to do this, they, they want to express themselves. Um, and, so, and for art, it's easy because you know, I, I'm a diplomat, I come to different countries, I love to see examples of chatty and art in my house, just like in every other post I've been. Uh, so for me, this is, a very, this is a very natural, simple thing. But for them, for any, chatty, for any young chatty in person, to have their talent recognized, to have their skill recognized, to have their hard work and their industry recognized, recognized, I think is empowering. And I think we need to translate that demand into the broader social and political life of the country, which is, hey, we're young Chadians. We forget about, uh, we don't have demands. We don't have expectations. We have skills. Right. We have talent and we have, we have industry and we have our energy. Uh, and I think the challenge for Chad, for your political class and for your friends, is to create a Chad whereby, in which those skills, that talent, that passion, and that, and that hard work, these are, the, these are the hardest working people I've ever seen. So I, I talked to a man whose job it is, is to gather sand. So he and his two sons, every day, take a pirogue across the Shari River to, to Kusuri. They load a pirogue with wet sand, bring it back to the Chadi inside, shovel it into bags and sell it to the construction. They do this morning till night to make a little bit of money. Now, I think anyone who's willing to work that hard deserves more. Deserves, so, so, that, that's, that, so that's what tonight is about. Thank you, thank All you right. very much. What is your opinion upon art, as in, as, a, as it art even, for example, as an exhibition art even now? So what is your... Look, what we're, what we're seeing here is some of the most talented and creative young Chadians showing the world their reality in different styles, in different media. Uh, but what, what unites them is them using their talent to show us how they view their reality. And, and that's, that's incredibly precious. You can't put a price on it, but if I do put a price on it, it's going to be very high. I'm going to make all the rich people in this room pay that price. All right. Thank all right. you very much, Mr. Ambassador.